Um, tonight is uh, some. Uh, we have two matches as part of the Death Blossoms Community Tournament. Um, week one. Um, right now we're with uh, Belladonna and Monka S in the um, bracket one, the gold plat bracket. Right. Yep. And then. Yep. Um, uh, I'm Eli, and here I'm joined with uh, Nua. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. Um, yeah, pretty excited for this game. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, I got to see Monka S um, when they were just getting started because they are a newly formed team for the tournament. Um, I got to kind of watch one of their preseason games, quote unquote, um, and they had a lot of fun and they seemed to gel pretty well. So I'm excited to see what they can put up against Belladonna. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually got to match up with them in that preseason game. Oh, and yeah. yeah, and they meshed very well. So I'm really excited to see, you know, how they, because they just met each other. So I'm excited to see how they've meshed even further and um, what, what they'll they'll do with their team. And then uh, Belladonna as well. They've been with the Death Blossoms community for quite a while. They are an official team of Death Blossoms and have been around for quite a while. They belong to the Gold Plat tier and um, they're, they're a very fun team and actually have, and have some really nice people. Awesome. So, um, so we, us being still in week one, um, the three maps we're going to be seeing tonight are Elios, Junkertown, and Hanamura. So, um, each one a little bit different, um, and I'm really excited to see kind of what different strategies and comps we get on these different maps, because some of them can be a little unique, especially, say, on like things like Ilios Well, Il Ilios Ruins, and then also Junkertown with um, the Bastion strat we might see from one of the teams. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely see a lot of the Junkertown uh, Bastion strat. Sometimes you'll see a Tour Barn there, too. Uh, <laughs> Very, very, very interested to see. And on the previous matches we saw, we saw some interesting compositions um, that that surprised us and how they how they took those those matches. So I'm excited to see what both teams do with it. Um, so I think right now we're just waiting for everyone to get set up, settled, um, get ready. But we should be um, starting any moment now. Um, again, the first map is Ilios. So um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about Ilios. So of course, it being um, a an, a control map, um, uh, it has those three different um, uh, kind of stages you see on Ilios. Those being ruins, well, and um, lighthouse. So, um, I kind of just want to ask you, Nua, um, which one is kind of maybe your favorite to play on? Uh, that's a very great question. Uh... I'm probably better at answering which one is my least favorite. Okay, I, let's go I, with that then. Yeah, I do not like ruins. <laughs> give me any other one, and I'll be happy with it. Do not give me ruins. Um, and how come? Like, why do you? Why is that? Uh, I think it's because a lot of the match is forced into to the center there, mm -hmm. and for me, it seems very one-dimensional. Um, generally, you're all going to go to the same place, while the other maps seem to be a bit more dynamic. They're a bit more open up. There's a bit different routes that you can go through, and there's a lot more exciting things that can happen with those. While with Ruins, you can generally expect the same thing to happen each mm -hmm. time. Oh, oh, and here we go. So let's see which one we get first. Now arriving at Thieves. So we are on Ruins first, so perfect timing for that so um like you were saying that ruins is like uh, is a lot more um predictable in what we see and i think that that's a lot due to the long sight lines it kind of being a very linear map so um th that's why we see a lot of those like um widow makers and those long range snipers and it's so predictable kind of like you said going going from each side of spawn to point so um maybe we'll see um our teams be a little bit more creative or maybe we'll see them go with the traditional snipers and we can we can already see belladonna's already looks like they might go that route of course it can always change once you get out the gate but mm -hmm. yeah definitely we'll see um so on both sides we're seeing them go more of a a death ball style of tanks with um the reinhardts on each side um we do see the off tanks kind of different on each side one has the diva and one has the zarya um, but it'll be interesting to see this interaction between um, the little bit more mobility of Belladonna uh, against um, Monka S's kind of more ground and pound. Five, four, uh, three, two, 
the and definitely Monka S will will I, I'm curious to see how they react to the widow. It, it doesn't look like they have too much on their side to really answer to her, and that that bear is definitely gonna have to be careful yep. if if she wants to stay up in the skies. So Amanda's coming around the right, trying to get a, a peek. Oh, gets one shot on the Pharah, and just the Pharah has to back away. Oh, Rick and Diva going so low, but Amanda just can't finish it off. Uh, meanwhile, on point, there's a little bit of a skirmish going on. Um, Ali just trying to walk in on point, but taking so much shield damage from the enemy team. Nub's getting very low. Oh, and gets demacked by um, Sikilis on the Zenyatta. Um, right now, it's a very slow fight, but it looks like Manka S is just taking too much damage and can't get on point very easily. Oh, and a nice pick by Amanda onto Reek and Diva. Um, Amanda's still on that right side, just trying to get those snipes in. Cyclist does trade out for the Zenyatta, but that will just be rezzed up by Lunare on the side of Belladonna. This is a very a, a long, drawn-out fight. I think um, Monka S will have to re-engage at some point. Um, Rican Diva coming back in. Evil Monkey getting that first pick. Nub's going very low, gets demeked once more. Uh, AJ Honey already has the Valkyrie. Uh, meanwhile, Lunare on the side of Belladonna's doesn't. Um, and Sikilis just cleaning up the point, and that'll be um, the return cap for Monka S. Yeah, we definitely saw that was a long, a long push from Monka S there. Uh, in fact, we see Belladonna, they're not 43%, uh, which gave them quite a bit of time before Monka S pushed in. Mm -hmm. Amanda is doing a good job on this Widowmaker, just pressuring out the, the enemies a little bit. But I feel like... Um, the ground war is being a little bit lost out by Belladonna's right now, especially with the um, the Junkrat and Pharah both shooting downwards towards uh, Belladonna's tanks. Here we go. So we see Belladonna go engage with the Riptire, and the Riptire gets Evil Monkey, who had the Riptire themselves, so that won't be coming into this fight. Amanda taking out Reek and Diva very quickly. Um, with uh, who tried to pop that barrage a big shatter from Zenish doesn't catches the two supports but instead focuses on the tanks on point and that will be a quick pick a uh, quick cleanup for the side of Belladonna's they definitely made use of their ults there they took out the Junkrat who like you mentioned had an ult of his own uh, Monka S is coming in though on this next push with ults uh, advantage so I'm interested to see how they how they they take this next fight. Yep, we did see Belladonna's use a lot more ults than the side of Monka S did that fight. So we'll see how these trades come in right now. Nubs throws in the bomb. Will they catch anyone? Yes, catches Evil Monkey again. Still with the rip tire. AJ Honey looking for the res. Yes, um, great cover to get it. But Ali Songs just, just throws a shatter down. Doesn't get anyone with it. Uh, the grab into the transcendence. But Evil Monkey still has the Rip Tower. Oh, and it gets shut down by Midori, Midi Midori. Um, the teams are still at full strength, just trying to grind it out. Danelle takes out Zenish. Midi Midori with another tire gets a triple kill off of it. And that will be another shutdown fight for Monk, uh, for Belladonna's. I don't think Monka S will be able to recontest this. They'll have to regroup very quickly if they want to get there on time. It looks like the Mercy tries to make it, but not quite. Mm -hmm. um, definitely in that last fight, it came down to making use of, of their ults. While Belladonna had less ults available to them, they, they just made greater greater picks with them. Um, and Monka S couldn't quite quite get the picks they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I definitely agree. The last engagement from Monka S seemed a little bit rushed. They were... Um, the Mercy was still rezzing in the back line, but the tanks were still trying to make big plays on point. So it was just a little disjointed, and I think that's what ended up losing the map for them. Yeah, and a big part of that could be accounted to them being a new team and learning each other. So we see Amanda here on the McCree this time, not going for the the Widow, but on the side of Monka S, we do see Sikilis swapping off the Zenyatta onto the Widow. Um, Monka S with the solo support... Um, uh, comps here, so oh, evil monkey switches to the honest, so no solo support, but um, definitely a little bit of a different look than what we've seen on a, in a lot of our uh, games on the ladder, maybe. Sikilis gets a good body shot onto Amanda. Amanda has to back up a little, um, and again, 
uh, Belladonna just kind of takes on takes control of point pretty easily. Um, there wasn't much of an engagement from Monka S right there. An impressive boot by, by the Lucio though over the edge taking out the Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, if they were going to engage in there, th that would definitely shut that any chance of that happening down. Some trades coming in, Sikalis getting Amanda, but that gets rezzed up, rezzed up pretty quickly. Recon Diva did die um, off the map, so Amanka S at a numbers disadvantage at this point. Uh, they're trying to come in through this small choke, but um, Midi Midori is just doing so much work with those Junkrat mines, um, spamming down those tight chokes, not letting Monka S kind of come onto point at all. Yeah, it, it definitely definitely does seem that that Monka S is, is uh, they they seem to be taking a little bit of time on on when exactly to push and when to attack, and oftentimes going in with with one down. Um. Mini Midori does have the tire, pops it, stalls a little bit, and gets to, gets the Ana and the Demek as well. So that would be a, a quick few kills for the side of Monka uh, uh, for the side of Belladonna's. Uh, Monka S is still just kind of hanging around point, um, not getting really much done here, and they just need to. They're having a little bit of trouble kind of going in as a team. Yeah, and we've we've been seeing that quite a bit, where where a few will go down, and we'll still see Monka S hanging around the point. Um, they don't really seem to, to leave or go in, and and again, w from what I said earlier, I think that's mostly due to them being a new team, probably trying to talk it out with each other on when to push in and when to go in. Mm -hmm. Alison goes for a charge, gets the D baby diva who's throughout the mech, it does have the sh shatter, but gets taken out by Midi Midori. Um, Nubs get rezzed up, and then this is just a cleanup fight for Belladonna's. And Monka S, again, doesn't get a good recontest on that point. Yeah, we, we see the, the Reinhardt go in onto the point, but we don't see the rest of the team join with him. So the Reinhardt is left is left alone in there, uh, and there's no, no one else there to contest. I definitely I see... Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, I would have liked to see the D.Va go in with him and and some of the other team uh, team members as well. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a pretty good first map. Um, we'll see if, as the, the series goes on, if Maka S kind of can figure out the communication a little bit more. They, they had some great individual play, but um, not enough uh, team cohesion to kind of be able to recontest those points. We are moving on to Junkertown, so um, Junkertown being a payload map, um, there's not really, there's, you just kind of need to fight around pay, the payload. So as long as they can get that done, maybe we'll see um, them have a much better, um, look much better on that map. Definitely. And you're, you're exactly right. We did see some great plays from them. It's just that team cohesiveness that, that we're, we're missing. And I hope we will get to see that in Junkertown. Um, so we kind of touched a little bit upon it um, at the beginning of the stream, but uh, Junkertown, like we said, it's definitely one where we see a lot of that, um, uh, the builders, kind of the um, uh, Bastion um, and Torbjorn maybe even, and a lot of those shield tanks like Orisa and um, Reinhardt. So um, is there anything that you're looking forward to maybe um, that you've seen like maybe an OWL play or like your own games on the ladder? Yeah, uh, I also think Junkertown is a game where Widowmaker is very popular mm -hmm. on both attack and defense, um, partially because she can take out Bastion if she can get through those shields, um, and she there's just a lot of space in the beginning. Uh, but one of the things I love about Junkertown is each time you get to a new checkpoint, the way that you attack a map is different, and I like to see a lot of different changes to account for those different map zones. So I hope we see that from both teams making adjustments as they need to contest certain areas of the map. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, uh, because we see a lot of teams kind of get stalled out on second point if they try to kind of push through with like an Orisa or a pirate ship strategy. But um, sometimes they really do just need to adjust for the um, enemy team and kind of readjust for the the the, kind of the, the play style and the 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 map ge geography as well. Um, so I that's really good point. We want to see those quick switches, um, adapting very on the fly to to respond to the enemy team. 
Exactly. And, you know, definitely the, 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 the scenery changes as you go. There, there's always a momentum. So if you have the momentum, definitely keep going with, with the, the team that you are. But sometimes you have to make those quick adjustments in, in, in the middle of the game to account for sometimes not even team changes, but map changes. Mm -hmm. But uh, always with Junkertown, I'm hoping to see Junkrat because I feel that, like that's his home. <laughs> Hilmer Roadhog. And completely for uh, flavor purposes, no other reason. <laughs> I've always said that it would be interesting if characters got kind of got like a boost on their home maps, so to say. Um, kind of see how that would affect the meta or play style in, in Overwatch. That would definitely make things... Uh, uh... A lot more interesting. And you, would, <laughs> you would definitely see very, very specific team comps on maps, I, I believe, if, mm -hmm. if that was to take place. Okay. So both... And it looks like we have Monka S now on the blue team and mm -hmm. Belladonna on the red team. Uh, they decided to switch sides for this, this map. Um, and the reason why they do that, a lot of teams will do that uh, because they, they like to switch out attack and defense. So usually they'll have one map where one of the teams starts out on attack. And then on the next map, then the other team starts out on attack. So we're seeing um, a pretty similar team comp to last map um, coming out from Monka S. Um, a big change that we're seeing here is that Sikilis, um, who was originally on the Zenyatta, is moving over to the Roadhog, and Rican Diva, who is playing Farah for most of Ilios, is onto the Mercy now. So um, we're seeing that triple tank um, composition come out, maybe to kind of uh, soak up a lot more damage um, on the defense. It's almost as though Monka S read my mind when I asked for Junkrat and Roadhog. <laughs> Um, on the team of the attack, we will not see a Junkrat, but we will see, the, uh, sorry, we will not see the Bastion, but we will see the the Widow like we talked about with those long sight lines. We'll see if Amanda can take advantage of those on this map. So, uh, Monka S setting up on the high ground and um, Belladonna's um, coming out from spawn, so we'll see how this first engagement goes on the payload map. It looks like Belladonna's is actually going to come out from the top. Amanda just sitting in the back trying to get a quick pick to start off the fight. Might have a trouble. Might have trouble with these large health pool tanks. Um, but maybe a snipe onto one of the supports will shut this push down very quickly. Um, on the payload. Oh, on the payload, we see a nice hook from Sickleus come out and gets mid Midori Midor Midi Midori. Um, and Ali Song just holding up that shield, being a strong front line for the side of Monka S. And um, the damage is just coming in very quickly for the side of Monka S. Uh, Ali Song does go down, but that should be able to be rezzed by Rican Diva. It is, and the team's just hanging around this corner. Midi Midori does swap over to the Reaper, though, so that might help with a little bit with this triple tank composition. Definitely. Um, and we see Monka S holding that, that corner. That's a very popular corner to hold. Um, it's very difficult for the enemy team to push and they can use the, the, the buildings on their right to, to limit the sight from the enemy. We already see some ults coming out. A Recon Diva with the very quick um, Valkyrie. Um, but Clouded Sky on the other side also has the Transcendence up. So we'll see if um, either of... Uh, if um, Clouded Sky feels like that's necessary and they do pop it. Um, the the rip tower coming out from Evil Monkey does get Lunare, and that's their mercy down. So that's a big value target. Evil Monkey does go down. A bomb comes out from the side of oh, and a big shatter from um <laughs> from Zenish, and an, a counter shatter from Ali. So the it's ults just coming out left and right in this fight, and it will be Monka S coming out on top with that be better shatter and the the more value transcendence as well. Yeah, Monka S definitely came in uh, with a, a more valuable and then, uh, you know, saw that their team was down, came in with the healing, um, and that kept their, their team up to be able to counter with the Shatter. Oh, Nub's coming in from the from the back trying to get the supports, but does get demeked pretty quickly. Um, we see a sort of a pincer movement right now, but um, Monka S holding very strong. Ali does get charged, um, Zenish does pin them, Denel throws the, the Diva Bomb, 
and will get two for for their trouble lunari and zenish it's a good amount of that reaper ult as well adenal doing a great job of keeping their team alive in this fight both supports down on the side of Monka S though, and this is where we might see the the team the fight might um, swing in favor of Belladonna. And with that transcendence, I think it's a pretty strong bet. <laughs> Evil Monkey does go after Zenish all the way in the back, but Lunari will quickly res that up. Uh, Clouded Sky does get taken out by Evil Monkey, so this long drawn out fight um, that seemed to favor Belladonna in the beginning is starting to be fought back a little bit by Monka S. Rican Diva does pop the Trentendence, trying to keep the team up for this last push. Only 60 seconds left for the side of Belladonna to push, so um, it's getting a little bit into that crunch time. Yeah, Monkey S has been doing a very good job of defending them up these chokes. Um, Monkey, or Belladonna though, coming in with some great ults in that last fight, uh, definitely comboing them, and that Transcendence keeping them up to be able to push into this next choke. Yep. Uh, Lunari does use a Transcendence, but maybe just a, too, t a little bit too late with some of the tanks going down. Um, and now with Midi Midori going down as well. Oh, Amanda does get a double, two picks, um, a third pick from Nubs. So, oh, and the, the Recon Diva also on the Mercy going down. So this is actually looking very good for Belladonna's on this last push. That was uh. definitely a, a great ult by the Pharah. Uh, we do see the Monka S Roadhog hook her to try to take her out of the skies, but the damage is already done and it's too late. Yeah, that was a little bit of a, a, a quick ult, but oh wow, and Recon Diva goes down very quickly. Um, so um, Belladonna just trying to ride out this momentum as best as they can. A Monka S without their um, Mercy will have to back up. They can't take too much damage here with just the solo heroes from their um, Zenyatta. Uh, I think the Reaper is going to do very well in this next choke. There's a lot of tight spaces and, and flanks for him to go through, and Monka S is still keeping up with the, the triple tank. Yep. Uh, Evil Monkey does get taken out by Amanda. Uh, a hook onto Amanda, but does not uh, get the kill. Um, Belladonna is taking a very aggressive stance here. A counter, counter shatter from uh, Ali, but the bomb does too much damage. Uh, Zenish does take is taken out by the other bomb, but that will be rezzed up by Lunare. Mon Monka S just getting cleaned up by this Reaper ult from Midi Midori, and that will be second point. A very quick um, momentum-based push through that second point. Yeah, I, there was definitely a lot of ults thrown between both teams, but I think Belladonna saw the, the advantage they could get and, and let out quite a few ults, but it ended up working for them in the end because they are able to get that second point. Mm -hmm. um, these bombs from uh, Nubs and Dental are doing a lot of work on both sides, so it's uh, it's been kind of the the map of Diva bombs, so to speak, on, right for right now. Definitely, yeah. There's been a lot of back and forth between the two divas. I'm really enjoying seeing the the play, and we keep we see a lot of shatter after shatter as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, Evil Monkey does take out Lunare. Um, Sikalis does pop the whole hog, takes out Midi Midori, and they will get a quick defense on this um, on, on the entrance onto the third point. Um, this is very key, especially with this um, this great um, these small chokes that Evil Monkey can take a lot of advantage of um, uh, uh, for the enemy t for uh, Belladonna's having a little bit tr more trouble trying to get onto third point. Uh, the fight does start out with a few trades, but Ali Song is taken up. Uh, Belladonna's is at a one-man disadvantage, um, but they do get out the, the Transcendence from AJ Honey. So it, it is a one fight from Monka S, but we do see that Transcendence come out um, when it possibly wasn't really needed, and the Valkyrie as well. Yeah, Monka S is, is in, a, in a bad position as far as support ults go now. Um, both their healers are in the lower end of their support ult charge, so if if Belladonna comes in here with their their strong set of ults, it could mean another strong push for Belladonna. Yep, so we see here Belladonna grouping up at the top. Um, they have both DPS ults coming up, so this will be a really big um, a boon to them. Um, Evil Monkey pushing up, trying to get the supports, trying to deny that res on Midi Midori, but Midi Midori d is taken back up. Uh, Clouded Sky does get picked out, and Amanda with the... Barrage gets taken out as well. Mini Midori does still have the Death Blossom, but thinks against pushing in for right now. Um, Belladonna just has to regroup for this one last fight with 60 seconds remaining.
Um, a few more ults being thrown out on both sides. And Danelle, again, with a huge bomb onto Lunari and Zenish, along with the DMAC onto Nub. So Belladonna is really just coming down to the wire. Their very last push here with 30 seconds remaining. They still do have both support, uh, a DPS salts. Um, and with Evil Monkey down without the tire, that's a big pick to start off. The, the D.Va ult, once again, we see great use of that. She throws it into that tight space. Uh, Midi Midori throws the Death Blossom, doesn't get much with the uh, Amanda with the Barrage still holding it. This Raining Rockets from above tries to get in position for it, but Lunar is taken out by Ali Song. Oh, and a big tire from Evil Monkey just shuts down everything. Another bomb, but will not get enough for, for this time. Clouded Sky does take out Ali Song, but the numbers are in, still in favor of Monka S. Uh, both supports, um, sorry. Rican Diva down on the side of Monka S, but Danelle and Sickleus just doing enough to clean up point here. The staggers are coming in from Belladonna's, and this will be a nice last point hold for the, from the side of Monka S. Another big bomb from Danelle. Oh, but Amanda comes in with, uh, still had that barrage, but... Oh, and it, the, the payload's actually starting to get pushed here. Ali Song coming in from the quick contest, but she doesn't have much support, has to back off from point. Ali Song does have the shatter. She can go for it. Will she? No, does get taken out. They uh, Monka S think, uh, rethinking that engagement and want to take a very last point hold here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to regroup. What an amazing contest there by both teams. Um, we saw great uses of ult. Uh, both were really fighting for that. And Belladonna comes in with that, with that justice and is able to push it further. Yep, that justice just came out of nowhere, and so it got enough people off the cart for them. Evil Monkey's tire does get taken out by Clouded Sky. Clouded Sky pops the transcendence, and so... Oh, and a nice counter transcendence to, ca to ca cancel out the Reaper ultimate, but the Diva Bomb comes in, doesn't get anyone this time. Uh, Monka S still looking strong on the point, but taking a lot more damage than Belladonna's. Amanda does take it, get taken out, but um, Monka... It, we're at a we're at a, a pretty even fight still uh, a lot more damage though coming out from the side of Belladonna's and will they able to be able to clean it up? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Lunare still alive in the back keeping the team up alive. Zenith does get taken out did pop the the Earth Shatter, but Sickleus comes in with the ult, pushing them off cart. Rican Diva still on point, Evil Monkey still on point, and Monka S should be able to clean this up and uh, say you are not getting that full capture what a great hold by monka s uh they definitely didn't want to give that to belladonna at the end they held there uh they they backed up at, at one point but it ended up working out for them because the, the, they only had supports left uh they waited for the right moment their tanks went in and held that the cart and they were able to, to clean up and that time when the justice came out from the pharaoh they were able to stop it yeah that was great um counterplay from both teams both teams using their transcendences at very crucial points both teams using their dps ultimates at very crucial points as well so um i would say the the mvps of that last fight were would be clouded sky and aj honey with those clutch transcendences um canceling out um both the the uh, with clouded sky getting that last hit on the rip tire and also aj honey protecting the team from that um last death blossom yeah we definitely I 100% I, I agree. The Zenyatta transcendences really did turn that, that game around at, at a lot of different points. Though I do want to give a shout out to both Divas, um, as we saw throughout the map, great ult uses. Uh, we saw them, you know, throw throw the mech across corners, which which helps to, to get the, the team off guard. Did it in spaces where they had the advantage, and it really ended up netting them a lot of kills and pushing them forward. Yep, definitely. Or holding them back in the case of... Monka S. So it was a strong defense from the side of Monka S on the first point um, and third point. Um, second point, it did get um, steamrolled uh, steam a little bit, but we'll see how um, Monka S can um, match up on their attack. Um, so here we see um, the same comps from both sides, just Amanda off the Farah and onto the Hanzo. Um, Amanda did start off on the Widow, so maybe trying to take advantage of those long sight lines once again. Uh, we see the side of Monka S come out from the bottom and just kind of go back on, go straight onto point. They're very wary. Oh, um, and there's a pause. Yeah, it looks like we have a disconnect on the Belladonna oh, side. Yep. 
Uh, looks like we're waiting for Lu Lunaire, I believe, is the one that disconnected. Yes. Um, so hopefully we'll get her back in soon. Um, I did want to comment on, though, uh, so far both attacking teams, we haven't we haven't seen anyone pull up the Bastion, um, which is a very common stride on this, but neither team is, is using that. Yeah, um, Manka S also going for this triple tank strategy. Um, I think it worked very well on their defense. Um, they had just a lot of big health bodies. It um, gave Amanda a lot of trouble on the Widow especially, um, just not being able to one-shot those characters as easily as, say, um, the 200 health characters that a DPS, you, like you might see from a DPS. Um, so her swapping off onto the Pharah did a lot of more work with that splash damage. Yeah, we definitely saw Belladonna switch over to more damage once they realized Monka S was going mostly tank. Um, being three tanks, it definitely made it harder for Belladonna to push forward a lot of the times, because you had to take out three giant health pulls rather than just the, the two that we see standard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a really great um, kind of switch up from Belladonna. They swapped off onto the Reaper as well, so it was really great adjustment on their side. Um, we'll see how offensively this triple tank setup works. Um, they'll need to be putting a lot more damage from the tanks, but um, with the aggressive uh, Roadhog and D.Va play, I don't feel like that will be too much of a problem for them. All right, and we do see on Belladonna right now, they do for their damage, Hanzo and Junkrat. And with Hanzo's new changes, he's become a DPS machine. He can shoot multiple arrows into a tank and bring it down. So it's probably a good pick for Belladonna if they think that Monka S is going to go mostly tanks again. Yep, definitely. And even his ultimate, um, the Dragon Strike, um, nowadays can be uh, can be seen more of a, a zoning ultimate, kind of difficult to hit on, on targets. But with these um, kind of less mobile targets like Reinhardt and um, Roadhog, those zoning ultimates are a lot, actually a lot more valuable um, with the, their slow movement and large hitboxes. Uh, also, just to let you know a little bit more about the teams. So, Monka S, the captain of that team, is Ali Song. She helped put the team together, as well as some other teams that people that wanted to compete in the tournament but didn't have a team, she was able to organize them together. Um, so, shout out to Ali Song for putting all that together. And then on Belladonna's side, we actually have co captains Clouded Sky and Midi Midori that co captain Belladonna. Oh, and it looks like Lunare is back in the lobby, so um, we should be able to get restarted here. Um, she was their mercy, so it will be a little difficult to get back, but we'll see how um, the teams want to react to this. It will be a little bit harder for Belladonna as they are the defending team this time, so it's a much longer route for them to get back to the start of the match. Yeah. An unfortunate turn of events, but um, not much we can do. Um, hopefully, we'll st still see a great game, though. So, I'd definitely be interested to see how the rest of the team adjusts for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here we go. So, back in the action. So we see some poke just coming out from both sides, um, trying to burst down these Reinhardt shields as best as each team can. Um, the side of Monka S definitely has a little bit more damage on the shield, and the shield goes down on the side of Belladonna. Uh, a hook comes out, but does not get the target they were looking for, and Lunare is already back with the team, so um, no numbers disadvantage anymore. They are coming to this first kind of choke on under the bridge here. Evil Monkey does get taken out by Nubs. Um, and, but Nubs goes in a little bit too deep. Um, Ali Song just swing that Reinhardt hammer, getting a lot of damage off. Uh, Rican Diva did get the res onto Evil Monkey, so they're back at full force, and Nubs out of mech right now. So th they should, they are just slowly pushing through this um, choke under the bridge. Nubs does get mech back, but Evil Monkey takes out Midi Midori. Uh, Lunari will res that up. Ali Song goes down. AJ Honey takes out Amanda. Um, a quick tire from the side of um, Manka S from Evil Monkey does take out Lunare, and they now are back on uh, the attack um, with a full force of six. A hammer comes down. Oh, and gets up. It's a big shatter and a nice um, follow up with uh, Midi Mid uh, Midori and Zenish taking out two more. So Manka S with a great first fight. Um, 
is being pushed back a little bit off the back of Zenish's great shatter. Yeah, and we see Belladonna is no, a lot. A lot of times, you'll see them pushed up further ahead on that first choke, um, or on the early point of that choke, and it looks like. Part of the mercy not being in there, it may have accounted for them being a farther back, or perhaps they like to play in that far further back area. A bomb came out from Nubs, but does not catch anyone out. Um, Transcendence is on both sides, so we'll see how the teams want to react to the damage coming out. Uh, Ali Song does get taken down by Amanda. Um, but Recon Diva goes for a risky res, does get it off, but gets taken out herself. The dragons come out, and that will be another one fight from the side of Belladonna's. So with Hanzo on Junk Junker Town, there's a lot of thin, thin paths for him to be able to shoot the his ult into. So he's able to, while it does normally work as a zoning ult, he can kind of catch some people off guard if they're in a tight space. Oh wow! Okay, Sickleus on the side of by the coast. Um boops nubs off the map with his ultimate a big t uh, oh and a nice over the top um diva ultimate from denel takes out three and now it's just the hanzo and mercy on the side of belladonna's so they will be pushed back evil monkey trying to get lunari does get aj getting aj honey gets the last hit Evil monkey taking out amanda and that will be a nice uh first point capture off the back of another great diva ult uh, again, uh, exactly as you said, we see another great D.Va ult by Monka S. Um, over the top like that, the Reinhardt's shield didn't didn't matter at that point, and it was able to catch three of the, the Belladonnas. We are seeing a recontest from the side of Belladonnas, but the, the, the members of their team are just being picked off one by one very easily and systematically. Um, and so this should be a first point cap for the side of um, Monka S. They also invested a few ultimates into that um, on both sides, actually. So um, we'll see how that affects kind of the momentum of um, Monka S onto the next fight because um, Belladonna's is already regrouped and ready to fight. Yeah. Now, Eli, I will I will say that it looks like Monka S used slightly one more ult than Belladonna's, so Belladonna's will be going into the next match with ult advantage. Yep, it's just maybe that last point rec uh, recount test didn't look so great, but it actually was a net gain for them, especially like you said with that ult economy advantage they have now. Another of uh, dragons coming out splits up the team into two. Ali Song and Sikalis stuck on the front lines, and Zenish takes Ali down. Uh, Recon Diva can't get in for the res. Sikalis also um, isolated and taken down, and the 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 rest of Monka S will retreat and try to take another fight. Exactly what we want to see from a Hanzo ult. You said at the beginning of the match that Hanzo ult can be used as a zoner, and that's exactly how they used it. They split up the team and they took advantage of it. So again, Diva bombs up on both sides. We'll see how um, they want to use these in this um, in these chokes. Um, another quick dragons coming out from Amanda. She's just farming these up very quickly. Nubs goes in um, to defend the res position. Um, Recon Diva will be able. Oh, uh, Evil Monkey takes out Amanda, um, and they push Nubs out. Uh, a big shatter from Ali Song does not catch anyone, but another uh, Diva bomb, and, and again takes out two along. Um, a, 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 a another Diva bomb, and the Rip Tower coming out from the side of Belladonna's, and they get the main tank and uh, Mercy, but. Uh, again, with those big bodies and that self-sustain on the side of Monka S, they're just able to keep pushing. Again, we see the D.Va take full advantage of her ult. Um, while Belladonna's did have the ult advantage there, Monka S just made a, a much better delivery of their ult with taking out two of their supports very early with the with the D.Va ult. And now we're seeing the, the ult economy switch a little bit, and Monka S now has the advantage. Yep. Um, the um, Belladonna engages with the Transcendence, but um, AJ Honey does have the Transcendence to respond to that. So right now, um, Monka S is taking almost no damage and they're able to um, keep pushing and just fight on cart very easily. Another bomb coming out from Danel takes out Midi Midori. Um, it's just uh, Lunare stuck on point now and they will cap second point. So now we're getting to a very, very similar time bank and a very similar um, position um, that we saw from the side of Belladonna's on their attack. 
I have to say, uh, seeing seeing the Danelle's ult there with the D.Va only touching one, I was slightly disappointed because from what we've seen, we've we've seen at least two picks be pulled from that. Um, so it almost almost when she she only gets one, it seems a little lackluster, <laughs> even though it's still a great pick. Yep, and especially when they were already, they, it was more of a six v two position, so did, they really didn't need that ult to be invested. A Rip Tower comes up from the top by Midi Midori and gets Rican Diva and Ali's song very quickly. So Monka S will have to retreat um, to make sure that they can get another fight or maybe two on this point. Yeah, that was a great, great ult by Midi Midori, taking out the Reinhardt and the Mercy. It seems that without having that Reinhardt or the Mercy to really push forward, uh, Monk S has trouble maintaining that point. Mm -hmm. And we do team. see a, a triple tank um, configuration also coming out from the side of Belladonna's now. Amanda swapped over to the Zarya, maybe wanting a little bit more of that health pool, but also um, maybe she's thinking to build up that grab. Another bomb comes out from uh, Nubs, does not pick up anyone, but does make space for Lunari to get the res on Zenish. Oh, a big shatter from Zenish! And that will be quick cleanup from the side of Belladonna's. A great follow-up to the shatter. Evil Monkey does pop the ultimate, get takes out Lunari. Um, but this fight is just going back and forth, getting picks on both sides. It's just an all-out brawl, and Bella, uh, and Monka S actually coming out on top. Uh, Nubs, Dmex, uh, Cloud, Clouded Sky taken out, Amanda taken out, and they will get positioned on the point. A big tire coming in from the side of Midi Midori, though, does take out two. Um, Rican Diva does have a res. Who will she go for? She brings Danelle back. Danelle with that ultimate. Oh no, oh, Danelle, uh, very close to the ultimate. Maybe another Diva bomb to clean out the map. Ali Song um, just pops the valve, keeping the team up alive, trying to get as much push as possible. Um, AJ Honey coming back quickly with the the um, the Lucio, and another ult from um, uh, uh, Sikilis coming out, and another big bomb. Will this finish out the map? I think it will. A big triple bomb from Danelle once again, and it just it's just uh, stragglers here for Belladonna's, and Monka S does have the positioning and do have the kills to take the map. Wow. Uh, going back to what you said earlier, when the Mercy had to choose between the Diva and the Lucio, um, I think she definitely made the right call with with getting Diva. Both mobile heroes can both get back fast, uh, but with her healing, the Diva can provide a bit more helpful and hold that that payload a little bit longer, which is what they needed. And was also close to ult, which we see once again make great use of it. Took out two healers and the enemy Diva. Yeah, that was some amazing Devo play on that map. I was really impressed. Um, not even just the bomb, but also the neutral play. Go, go getting very aggressive and look at that transcendence healing from AJ Honey. I I wouldn't be surprised if Clouded Sky had a very similar number to that. Um, great play from both sides, a very close match. It was a very close match. And now we are at one to one for both and have one map to go um, to see who will, will, will take the lead in this, this, this first set of maps. Um, so, the third map um, we will be seeing is now Hanamura. So, Hanamura, um, of course, being an assault map, it, we have those capture points. Um, and so, with these capture points, it's a, it's a little bit more similar in style, I would say, to um, control, like Ilios. So, we did see a lot of struggle with the engagements from the side of Monka S at the beginning of the, uh, of the match, um, especially with their engagements on Ilios, but... Um, do you think that maybe um, Junker Town has given them um, a little bit more time to warm up and we'll see a lot better engagements coming out from the side of them? We did see a lot more engagements from Monka S. There did seem to be a bit of, of a timidness still there. Um, I feel like they might have been more aggressive in certain situations. And for, for me, Hanamura is a map you have to be aggressive in. You have to know when to push. You have to commit to that push and, and go in. Uh, so I hope we'll, we'll see them take that momentum from Junkertown um, and make the pushes together when they need to make them uh, and be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely uh, really key on Hanamura, especially when you're trying to take second point. Um, with the defense spawn so close, you really just have to commit. You have to say... Um, we're really making this effort and we're just going to go all the, all in um, as hard as we can um, or else um, you, you've basically lost before even engaging if you're not going to commit to the fight. 
Yeah, and there is a very early choke. It's a very difficult choke to get through. There's a few strategies that teams have developed to, to break that choke, uh, but that's going to be the key is them pushing through that choke and getting to the point. Yep, and especially with the heroes we've seen from both sides, the Junkrat and the Hanzo, um, two great zoning characters denying those um, tight chokes, um, I could definitely see both teams um, being very successful in breaking those tight choke points. Yeah. Do you think that Monka S might go their, their three tank tank route again and just try to bully their way into that choke? Um, it's very possible. Um, I could definitely see it coming out from them. Um, the damage did not seem to... They did not seem to struggle at all with um, damage output, even with the three tanks. So I could definitely see that coming out from them once again. If they do end up using that that same strategy the only concern i would have is is it fast enough um with hanamura if you take too long at the choke you're really eating up time and lowering the chances that you have of taking that point mm -hmm. yeah that also goes back to kind of their um engagements um if they have these slow characters will they be able to kind of commit um quickly in the comms to um take advantage of their large bodies and just push onto point so on the side of um, Belladonna right now, we do see the the um, soldier coming out. It's something that we've uh, seen kind of go out of style for a little bit. Um, but again, with yesterday's patch, with the arrival of Wrecking Ball, aka Hammond, um, but also a, a, a few number of buffs and adjustments to different characters, including all the hit scans um, like Soldier with their um, uh, damage fall off being reduced. And I'd definitely be interested to see how he plays in this matchup with the, the recent changes that have occurred. Um, on the side of Monka S, we do see that triple tank coming back out. Um, Evil Monkey on the solo Junkrat, as we've seen for a lot of these um, points. Uh, the, the triple tank is, is probably a good call here as they are going to be on defense. They're going to try to make that, that push through on that choke as slow as possible for the enemy team. It's kind of the opposite of what I was saying before. You know, where the, the attacking team has to be direct and fast in their approach. They're going to try to slow it down as much as possible with the triple tank. Mm -hmm. So we'll see uh, how... Oh. And just as you expected, we do see Junkrat for both teams. Very good in this this matchup because, again, there's that, that choke in the beginning. And the Junkrat can deal a lot of damage to those going through it. So we'll see how um, we actually had a swap come in. So Nico Nico uh, replaced Zenish on the main tank here. So we'll maybe see if that affects the play a little bit as well. Nico Nico just trying to push through on the Reinhardt, um, get aggressive positioning, but gets very low and gets taken out by Sickilis. Uh Nubs also go getting very low. Um, AJ Honey with the great positioning all the way in the back, just um, getting those orbs in. Um, very effectively, and that will be two of their the two tanks on the side of Belladonna's um, taken out. Yeah, again, you know, we see Monka S. Uh, the Junkrat is dealing a lot of damage, making up for the thing, the, the one damage carrier. And Roadhog is actually a tank that can actually deal out a lot of damage as well, which is helping to account for their damage loss. We see a very similar engagement come out from the side of Belladonna's, just walking up to choke, recharging shield, just trying to get pushed through as best as they can. Um, but with all these bo big bodies from the side of Monka S, it's a little bit more difficult. And they also have to be wary of the Junkrat. Um, Nico Nico gets hooked, the Riptar comes out, goes straight for Lunare, and that's another two picks for the side of Monka S. Uh, Rican Diva, under a little pressure though, does pop the Valkyrie, um, takes out Nubs on point. Um, they do stagger her a little bit. Um, uh, but that is one, that's two ults from the side of Monka S, um, down with the Riptire and Valkyrie. Yeah, Evil Monkey was very, very precise with that, with that Junkrat tire, went straight past the Zenyatta when anyone else would have attempted to, to use it there, found the Mercy, knew she, she could res, and took her out with it. Uh, we do see Belladonna coming in though, they do have ult advantage, but only slightly. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see how they want to engage with this. They have both support alts rather than um, Monka S only having the Transcendence. So we'll see if maybe they want to make um, a, a, a light in, um, engagement. Um, the Riptire coming out from Midi Midori does take out two. Uh, Sickilis ulting right there and is taken out. Amanda pops the, the ult as well and just cleans up um, uh, Midi Midori cleaning up Rican Diva. 
Uh, Danelle back in back um, does not have the ultimate, did pop it earlier. AJ Honey and Danelle just trying to stall out point as best they can. Um, Amanda Nub and Nubs just cleaning up on point. Definitely a great push by Belladonna. They they got those picks on those two tanks. As soon as they got them, they, they knew they had to take advantage of it and made that push to go in. And now looking at oh. this, they do still have the um, ult advantage um, on the side of Belladonna. Um, four to two, uh, two, almost three, but um, they do have both tank ultimates and both support ult ultimates as well. So uh, although they use both DPS ultimates on that engagement, they still have a nice healthy bank to come in with. They did a great job of holding on to their ult and not using too much. Um, so we see here Nico Nico on the side of Belladonna is just walking through the center. Um, Lunari does pop the Valkyrie, but um, Ali Song gets a nice shatter off. Um, does get one down. Oh, but a big counter shatter from Nico Nico does take out Ali Song. No shield to block the Diva ultimate from Nubs, but does not catch anyone. Um, Rican Diva with the Valkyrie again, very low. Tries to res um, Evil Monkey. Will get Evil Monkey up, but goes down for it. Amanda with another um, uh, Soldier ultimate gets taken out by Danelle's bomb, and the f the the trades are just coming in um, back and forth, but. Um, with Monka S being so close, they might be able to hold on to it still. Um, as I say that, Evil Monkey gets more kills um, onto Nubs. Danelle cleaning up point. Um, um, Monka, uh, sorry, Monka S does clean up point, um, and they will push um, uh, Belladonna oh, off. had some great picks in, in that initial in, engage, uh, but they just couldn't take out the rest of them, and the, the team was able to get back with that closer defense point. Uh, so they'll definitely need to try to speed up how they take them out, which is definitely going to be a little bit hard with the... Uh... Well, actually, it looks like Monka S has switched off the triple tank, has now brought out Doomfist on Zikolas. Yep, I'm very interested to see um, this Doomfist play, maybe what what they were planning to do with it. Ali Song does get charged, taken out. Zikolas also on the Doomfist does taken, get taken out. Rican Diva goes for the rest, does not get it out in the open, no protection for her. Um, Evil Monkey's just trying to brawl on point, trying to build this ultimate as fast as they can. The ultimate does come out from Mini Midori. Oh, who is who are they going to go after? Gets Ali Song and Sikilis back on the respawns. And so, um, this should be a cleanup fight from the side of Belladonna's, and it is. Uh, Belladonna's knew what they needed to do. They kept great control of their ult. As you see, they still have ults left. Uh, for the, the remaining that were coming in if they had time to get in um, and and they made that push forward to be able to take that point yeah Belladon is um did a really great job at just um uh, getting pick after pick one by one kind of staggering them very well but also getting the qu kills quick enough to be able to capture point yeah on the second push we we saw a difference between that first push. They were much more clear about their targets. Um, they, they took them out and and there wasn't as much staggering in from the blue team to hold them off at that point uh, because they were able to clean them up pretty quickly. Yeah, and the blue team also looked a little bit scattered in their positioning. Some were on point, some were on the high ground, some were um, trying to get um, a flank off. So um, that, that spread out um, nature of their um, positioning was just, um, did not bode well for them as the focused attack from Belladonna's came out. Yeah, I don't know if the switch was the right call. I, I know that they, you know, they, they we, we've been seeing triple tank from them, and I think the triple tank helped them hold back Belladonna's in the initial fight, which is what, what caused them to not be able to take things out as cleanly or as quickly as they needed to. And in that last fight, they only had two tanks to worry about. They were able to to, to clear those out and clear out the, the, the rest of the team as well. So on the side of Belladonna's, we do see the triple tank um, that we've seen a lot from Monka S actually come out um, with the Zarya rather than the Roadhog. Um, probably to get that grab um, and combo with the tire from Midi Midori, who's done a great job on getting these um, pickoffs as well. Yeah, again, I think it's a great call on this map as defense uh, because you're going to be slowing the attacking team down from pushing to the point, uh, giving them less attempts to be able to, to make that push. AG Honey has sw swapped off the Zenyatta onto the Lucio, so perhaps this will help um, with this um, the struggle we talked about trying to get onto point a little bit faster. They are approaching choke. AJ Honey does have the speed boost. Um, uh, they do just recharge for a little bit, getting ready to push in. Ali Song just around the corner, ready for it. 
Um, they're just playing around the corner a little bit, trying to get shield back up. But Danelle does get picked off, um, does get demexed, and we'll have to build mech back up. So Monka S just has to wait just a little bit longer for this engagement. Alisson getting picked off um, there very late. Nico Nico gets very low, but Rican Diva uh, able to just res around the wall. Uh, Danelle back in the mech, so um, they are back at full strength. Um, Rican Diva already almost ha more than halfway to um, her first Valkyrie, so will they be able to push in um, quickly off of this speed boost? Maybe trying to build ult for this first push? Um, a, a very big, uh, just a, a very awkward stalemate at this point. Um, a charge comes in onto Ali Song, it does connect. Nico Nico getting very low on the return. Um, Midi Midori does pop the Rip Tire, is looking for Rican Diva and does take her out. And she popped Valkyrie. Um, however, we do see the grab come out from uh, Amanda on what could be considered a one fight already. So um, the cleanup is coming out for the side of Belladonna's, but um, a few more ultimates coming up online for Monka S. And Eli, you said it earlier, that was an off stalemate that we saw at the choke there. Um, my main worry about, about Monk S coming in, we, we want to see them push forward, um, break that, that choke, um, and they're spending a lot of time in that, that area waiting for the right moment. Um, they do have which the Lucio. We see a lot of time taken because of that. Yeah, they do have the Lucio, so they, they really just need to commit off of the back of his speed boost, kind of push in very quickly. Um, they have a lot of health to do that with as well, so. Um, they're just taking a lot of time, and um, as time goes on, they're, they're also feeding a lot of kills. The Nell does get demeched. Um, AJ Honey went down a little bit earlier. Uh, Nubs throws a bomb in, and um, no one to protect Rican Diva in that situation, so it does get taken out. Um, Ali Song will also go down. Did pop the Earth Shatter with two of their teammates down, so we'll not have that for the next fight. So uh, Monka S just being a little bit too slow and committing a little too late on these fights. Uh, we will see the swap off the Reinhardt though onto the Winston um, so that that a lost ult is no harm no foul. Maybe this Winston will help um, break this choke a little bit faster especially with this dive. Um, Ali Song walks up uh, dives behind the team, drags them away. Danelle comes in with the bomb and takes out Lunare. That's a big pick. Uh, Sikilis does get Nico Nico. The tire comes out from Midi Midori. Um, going after um, the supports, but will. Uh, Danelle able to, not able to get it in time. Ali Song does go down. Rikin Diva does get the, uh, the res off. Um, it's a 5v5 on point. 4v5 now with uh, Evil Monkey getting the double, uh, the double kill with the DMEC. Um, and Amanda. that's exactly what we've been looking for for Monka S um, as they, they sweep up Amanda and push her off the point. Uh, very, very well thought out attack. They knew what they wanted to do. They came in strong and fast and were able to get the point because of that. It was a much more intentional push from Monka S. Yep, I think this switch um, for, uh, for Ali Song onto the Winston has done a great job. It really kind of put Belladonna's on the back foot, not expecting this. They will push up through the, the top right uh, choke here. So like we were talking about earlier, uh, a little bit of a difficult choke to push through. Um, they do get grabbed through the wall by Amanda. Um, not a lot of follow-up damage though, so um, perhaps they'll be able to uh, get out and recontest. But as I say that, Evil Monkey going down, Danelle getting demexed, Sikilis also going down, Ali Song getting picked off as well. Um, and it's just a cleanup fight from the side of Belladonna. I do think it's important for teams to take that high ground, but I don't know if it's right for Monka S right now with their composition. They do have the Junkrat though, so putting them in a small area does give the Junkrat some 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 damage to lob into. Uh, but with their current uh, semi-dive comp, it might be best for them to go straight onto the point, be aggressive, and, and force the team to defend it. Yep, I definitely agree. It's a, it's a little awkward to take a slow push with these um, dive tanks that they have. Uh, Danelle's still building up to the mech, so they won't be able to take a fight as quickly as they might want to. Um, they're still looking at this top right choke to go for. Nubs throws the bomb out, um, does take out Ali Song, but gets the bubble down for the rest of the team. Rican Diva able to res that up. Um, Danelle building back up to that ultimate a little bit quicker, um, and they will just wait for this engagement once more. Uh, Danelle does have the mech, so perhaps they'll push off the back of this. 
um, pushing through, throwing a few junk rat mines into the choke. Um, and now they're actually just going straight on to point. Danel throws a bomb out, does take out Midi Midori on the, the Pharah, just a little out of position. Um, an Earth Shatter into a Graviton Surge, but a lot of healing coming out from the side of uh, Monka S with the Valkyrie and Sound Barrier coming out. But just too much damage from the side of uh, Belladonna's with that um, Pharah ult as well as the um, uh, the Transcendence to keep um, Belladonna's up and healthy. So that will be another lost fight for the side of Monka S. We did see them jump on the point this time very very aggressively. Um, it took them a moment to get through that choke on the top right. Um, probably something that they could have cleaned up a little bit more, done a little bit faster. Uh, but once they did get to the point, we saw a lot of back and forth between both teams. Uh, it was just use of ults in the end that ended up winning it for, for Belladonna's there. But uh, Monka S was looking good in the start of it, and I, I believe they could take it if they, they try to make that push again. Perhaps uh, seeing the Fera as a little bit more of a threat, they do swap off the, the Roadhog onto the um, the Soldier on the side of uh, Monka S. And they are looking to engage through the, the through main. Ali Song already on point, um, building up that control meter, but taking a lot of damage. Evil Monkey dead taken out by Midi Midori. That's a large amount of their damage. Um, and Ali Song and Danelle just going down. Recon Diva f to follow. Um, and uh, Monka S being a little slow to build their ultimates and um, on the side of Belladonna, they also have a very large ult bank coming up. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a, a, a lot better ult management from, from Belladonna's overall. Um, Monk S is really going to have to either perhaps go on with a dry push to try to get their ults up or be very tactical with how they use their ults. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are cl closing in on less than 40 seconds remaining in the round. So um, if it's not this push, it will have to be the next push. They have to be very quick with this. Um, the the side of Belladonna is still positioned up on top, but they drop straight down to point when they see um, Ali Song dive in. Ali Song taking out quickly. Danelle does get the return kill on Midi Midori, and Recon Diva with a risky res does get Ali Song back up. Danelle does have to pop the ultimate to keep her team uh, to keep her mech. Um, Evil Monkey, but but Evil Monkey and Sickleus just doing a lot of damage from the back line. Evil Monkey with a double kill with the respawning um, Midi Midori um, and cloud, uh, Clouded Sky. Sickleus just has a great positioning on this high ground, and um, they will be able to cap second point. However, this it is in overtime. Uh, that's really what we want to see from a soldier. We want to see them get onto that top bridge and and just take shots at the the enemy team from there and it's very hard to answer to that when you're trying to get to the point um but but leaving leaving them up there without any sort of contest the soldier's able to do a lot of damage yeah that last fight was very um well planned by the side of um monka s that big dive in the risky res by uh the big play with the risky res by recon diva uh, kept Ali Song in the fight, um, and Denal was able to um, just remet quickly with a quick bomb, and Sikulis, um again with that great positioning, just cleaning up on point, getting a lot of damage in. Evil Monkey diving in the back line, taking out um, the um, the Zarya and then the Farah and um, Zenyatta with the ultimate. Just great alt management. Um, even though they didn't have the ults going into the fight, they used them very well throughout the fight. Yeah, um, we are. As, as you said earlier, we're going to see them go into overtime. Monka S, unfortunately, because they went into overtime when they were getting the point, are not going to have time to make a push on here, but Belladonna is. So Monka S is hoping for a draw right now, and Belladonna just wants to get that first point. Oh, and we do see the Slambulance or Goats comp coming out from Belladonna, the 3-3, three, 3-support, three, three 3-tank. Three um, them knowing that they just need that first tick, um, they're just going to go straight in with this um, large amount of sustain and damage and try to push straight through. And they have quite quite a lot of time to be able to do it, three minutes. Uh, they, It's definitely going to be a hard fight for Monka S. Uh, this first fight will be a lot on the back of Evil Monkey, whether they can build this all and just do a lot of damage to these large uh, b bodies. Um, AG Honey does go down, but did take out Amanda before that. Um, Evil Monkey just working on this D.Va, does D-Mech, already 80% to the first rip tire. So this is looking very good for the first defense on the side of Monka S. Um, as I say that, Nico Nico does D-Mech, oh and gets a triple kill, but Evil Monkey back on point, does have the rip tire, needs to be very careful. Um, has to contest point, but needs to use the ult and will not be able to. So a little bit of a split up in that fight, just 
put Monka S yeah. on the back foot. And the Brigado was able to, to push off that, um, pu push him off at the very end there, keeping him from, from getting to the point. Uh, Nick, Nick Nico, though, coming in and, and taking out the score, uh, they went the right path underneath the, uh, the the building on the right to to lead and kind of go, go where they wanted to in the battle. Amazing play right there. Um, that's what we saw. Uh, take take that last tick for them. And Belladonna is going to win the final map of tonight. Yep. Um, so Belladonna does come out on top um, in today's match. But um, I was really impressed with the play on both teams. Um, putting up a great match to watch and a, a good fight on both sides. Uh, definitely. But it was a great match to watch. We saw a lot of back and forth, a lot of good plays from both sides. It was a very enjoyable match to 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 watch. And both teams should be very proud of their their play. Of course. Yep, exactly. And I, I'm really excited to see um, how they progress further on to the tournament. Um, these two teams were very uh, well evenly matched. So um, we'll see how the rest of the, the bracket um, matches up to these two teams as well. And we do have another game, Eris versus Cookie Bites, coming on in about four, or 20 minutes. Um, so we'll be seeing another match after that, which we'll be hosting on the Death Blossoms stream, which is uh, twitch.tv slash deathblossomsgg. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and spam it in my chat as well. So Death Blossoms uh, GG, right? Yep. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and spam that in my chat. So all of you guys know to head over there. Um, we'll, we'll both still be casting, but um, we'll be hosting it over there this time. Yeah, we're very excited for that match. It should be another great, great matchup. Uh, the Duff Blossoms have done very well organizing this tournament and putting people in brackets um, where they're facing other teams of similar SR. So we're excited for the next match. Expect good things. Um, so we hope to see you all over there in about 20 minutes, but for now, um, we'll sign off and see you soon, hopefully.